Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. was born in Cameroon and destined to leave an undeniable mark on the tech world. She is the founder and CEO of System Builders based out of San Francisco. Please welcome Cindy Faso. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I am here with Cindy Faso of Information Systems Builder. Cindy, how are we doing? Hi, how are you, Gabe? Good. I'm really excited. Uh, this is very interesting. We we're actually briefly talking about this. Her company really specifically focuses on a specific group, or a specific industry. But before we get into that, Cindy, could you please introduce yourself, share a bit about your educational background, career journey, any personal experiences that have shaped your entrepreneurial journey? Yes. Hello, everyone. My name is um, Cindy Faso. I have my bachelor's and master's at um, St. Mary's College of California. It's in a little town in California where it's in Moraga, um, a private school. And um, yeah, I studied communications and, you know, I've always had um, just the love of marketing. And um, I, I just think marketing is just a beautiful um, space to be in because, you know, you, I, I remember the reason why I got into marketing is because um, I remember when I was, I would say 16, I started a company and I had no background. I didn't know what I was doing. I think I was just ex- inspired by my dad. Um, my dad just has that, entre- he just has that founder mindset. And um, I was like, I really, you know, I, I really want to like find, you know, have a company. And I, you know, I don't even think I registered that company, right? Just started selling stuff. And I've always, you know, loved marketing. And I was like, well, no one knows me, right? I'm 16 and no one knows me. And I was like, well, I need to master marketing in order for people to buy my product and, and for people to be interested in me. And um, that's where my love for marketing just started. Now, let, like, let's let's uh, talk about what what is your current venture uh, or business, and what inspired you to pursue this particular entrepreneurial endeavor. So, my current one is I am the CEO, the founder and CEO of Information Systems Builder. Um, we focus on tech startups for the marketing, and we create a software where. Um, it's a marketing solution software where they could go and on the app store or, or, or Google and they could put information about the marketing and then it will give you them um, steps on um, how to market the company. And I think I just focused on that on tech. So I'm, I, we only focus on tech startups and I just. I just focus on tech startups because I felt like tech startups need the most help right you have these big tech companies like google facebook um instagram twitter and they already have a name right you know mark zuckerberg can come up with a new company right now and it will do amazing because he has that name right and i I was like, what about tech startups? Who's helping them, right? Because they are a new person that came up with a great product and they're geniuses and they just don't, they don't, they don't have that name behind them, right? And I always say this, you could have a great product, but without the right marketing and without people knowing about it, it's just a great product, right? And um, I think that's where my love for um helping startups started. Um, and that's why I'm focused on just tech startups. Yeah, you know, nice. One of the things you mentioned was, um, you know, differentiating yourself, right. C- essentially creating a different service. How do you current, uh, differentiate yourself? How does the informatic system builders 
differentiate themselves or are there like, are there other competitors in your industry or are you kind of the only one right now? Well, information systems builder, we, um, we're the only one that just focus on tech startups. And, um, I know we'll get into it, um, later on the show, but I, I really think that everybody does the same thing a little bit, (laughs) like, you know, like you're never really there, but you need to find out what makes you unique and the niche that you want to help. And I, I, when I was doing my research, I said, there's no company that just focuses on tech startups. That was mind blowing because, you know, I talk to founders every day and they need help. There is a lot. It's just not marketing, right? There is, there's a space there. The niche the, 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 they are hungry for help. And, um, so to answer your question, yeah, information systems builder, we're the only one just focused on startups, uh, tech startups. Nice. Now let's, let's take a step step back to the beginning of your entrepreneurial journey. You mentioned, uh, you know, what motivated you to be beginning with your father. Talk a little bit about that. What, what, what is it that he did that helped motivate you to jump into the entrepreneurial world? Oh, my dad started his company when he was 30 years old. Um, and he, he told me he, um, was working for somebody in Cameroon. He was working for someone in Cameroon and then he, he was working for like five years, six years, and then he started his own company. Right. And I think my dad inspires me because he's someone that views life as you could do whatever you want to do when you put your mind into it right? There's no limitations. And I think he inspired me in that way. And him, you know, um, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm African. I come from Cameroon and, um, my dad at 6am, he will wake me up and he will say, what you're sleeping? Like, this is not okay. Like he had that mindset of, you can't be in bed at 10 a.m., right? You need to get up. There's things to do that, you know, um, and my dad was always inspired me to be that. And my dad always dreamed big and he always had ideas of, you know, if you make your own and, you know, be unique, be your own person. So I think all of that just made me so inspired that um, I, I was like, man, I just need to be a founder and have my own, you know, my own thing. And, um, yeah. Nice. You know, you know, starting a, starting a business, uh, can be, have it's rewarding moments, right? What are some aspects that you found relatively easy or enjoyable during the early stages of your entrepreneurial journey? Enjoyable. I love just coming up with solutions for problems that haven't been resolved or they've been resolved but where they do exist but there's a specific thing that they haven't resolved and I just love just being able to um have an idea make it come true and helping everybody. Right. I think that's like so dope. Right. It's just, you know, and I'm not knocking anybody that does nine to five. Right. I think it's, they're amazing. Um, but I think when you're working for someone else, it's not really your ideas, except if you're like an executive, executive, but you have, you know, the people that are having these ideas are like Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk and Um, I think for me, when you work for someone, it's like you have, you're like, I think this product would be better if we do this, but you don't have the power to make that decision. Right. Um, So I think for me, it's just the power of putting my ideas in a company, right. And seeing it grow. Um, That's what I enjoy in the beginning. Nice. And, you know, with rewards, uh, entrepreneurship comes with its fair share of challenges, Uh, Could you share some of your significant hurdles you encountered when uh, working your own business? And how did you navigate through those? I think the challenges is, I think in the beginning, when you're first starting to have um, to create your company, I think when I, when I started, uh, I live in San Francisco, um, where I'm in the Silicon Valley, where the tech world is male dominated and um 
it's like the same people. But I think when I started to be a founder, I didn't know the politics that goes into it, right? I didn't know the VC world. I didn't know this. And I think when I first started um, my company, I was kind of naive, right? I was kind of like, oh, I have this great product. And I didn't know that, oh no, like you need to know certain people, you need to be in contact with this person um, to raise money. That's a whole politic in itself. I didn't know about valuations. I didn't know about the trick of that. So I think if you are a founder and you come in here thinking that there's no politics and you just need a great product, you're going to be very surprised. So I think, I, I mean, now I, I, I don't want to say I'm a veteran, but I think now I'm so experienced and, you know, and everything that I think, you know, I, I'm like, okay, I, I know who I need to talk to, right? If I needed to do this, I'm like, okay, I'll reach out to him, right? And I think people, someone coming coming in, if they don't know that, they will have a lot of challenge. They will say, wow, <laughs> you know. You know, you, you talked about the variations you, you won, uh, how you're, you're a female breaking into a male-dominated world, right? You, you mentioned you're, you are from Africa. So, so. Talk us, walk us through the strategies and efforts you employ to build and establish your brand identity, to really kind of pave the way and get, get yourself into the doors to have those conversations, as you mentioned, in a, a very male dominated industry. Yeah, I think I, I, a lot of people ask me this, right? They're like, well, you're, you're a woman, you're a black woman, and you're in a world where it's very white dominated. And I will say I've had my, I think when I, I, when I, when I use, when I didn't know them, right. When I used to go to events or conferences and stuff like that. And I think they would mainly see me, I'm a woman and they'll be like, oh, maybe she's just a pretty face. Like, what are you doing here? And I think you have to prove yourself, right? I think when you prove yourself and you do tell them, um, I deserve to be here. I am intelligent. I know my stuff and I am not going to be intimidated. And, you know, I think when, I think when they know that, oh, okay, she means business and she's very, she knows her stuff and she's, I think they start to respect you, right? They're like, okay, you, you, um, so I, I would say hard work, you know, talks for me, right? My work talks for me. So I think, um, you know, being in this industry where it's just male dominated, I think it's in the beginning, it, it, it could be a little bit challenging because they just think you're here for a pretty face and you just have to prove yourself. Yeah. And how, how do you give us some examples of how, like, for example, what should customers expect from working with you? Yeah. So when my customers come, um, I ask them, okay, what do you, what do you, what, what do you gain? right? What do you want from this outcome of the marketing, right? And they tell me, well, I want this, I want this. And um, I, if I could go deep, um, I had a founder that came up to me and he, he, he's competing with Apple. He's doing this app where it's like Google maps, but when you go on social, let's say you go on LinkedIn and someone posted there at this restaurant, but they didn't say, um, I'm at this restaurant. So you screenshot it and then you go to his app and then it'll, it'll look at you exactly where that restaurant was, right? And if it's near you or whatever. So great idea. And um, yeah, he came up to me and he said, hey, like I have this amazing product that I'm competing with Apple, right? And I need your help. Um, and I think, I think working with the founder that's very open-minded, right? And I think... And I, I love your podcast because it just talks about entrepreneurship. Um, I think when you come, just be open-minded. People are going to criticize you. Don't take it as an offense of, oh, they are attacking me. I think criticism is one of the best things that you're going to have as a founder because it will make you better, right? If everybody's like, oh, great, amazing product, you're, 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 you're never going to grow right? You need to be able to take criticism and people are going to criticize you, right? And um, I think he was open to it. He was very open-minded. He was like, okay, well, you know, how do I need to brand myself? Um, 
with this company? What is Apple doing that I'm not doing, right? That's also one thing. When you're looking at your competitors, what are they doing that what are they doing that is not good? And what are they doing that are good that you could see, right? I would always say whenever I work with my um with my clients, I tell them, go to your competitors, see their reviews, all the bad stuff that they're not doing. You need to do the exact the, you know, you need to do. So let's say, for example, they're like, oh, they never answer the phone. Like I, I need I customer service is really bad. You be great at customer service, right? So, um, so yeah, just helping startups with their marketing and getting out there. We do branding, whereas you know we're working with the founders to be because also when you're let's say you're fundraising, people are investing in you, right? They they're they're investing in you most of the time. Um, so we do branding, marketing, um, and etc. Nice, nice. Now. How, how what would you say are some of the common mistakes you've seen founders make uh, in regarding branding and the, creating a you know brand presence that you have to help work through? Oh, I think the branding mistakes some founders do is they think, for example, I was working for this founder and he's raised like fifty million dollars. And I was telling him, well, I think you need to go to this event, this event, this event, right? And he was like, oh, no, I don't want to go to that event. Like, you know, um, he was kind of saying that there's nobody that's going to help him there. Like, he doesn't see um, the benefit in going. And I always tell people, you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who knows who. So you can never say, I'm not. I'm not going to connect with Gabe because Gabe doesn't know this person or I'm not, I'm going to connect with Gabe because he knows you just never know. I mean, not everybody, Mark Zuckerberg was once the person he was once going to every office, like, Hey, I have this great idea. Please help me. Hey, Hey. So yes, someone could not help you today, but they could help you in five years. Right. And I think some founders, I see a pattern where it's like when they, when they're at a certain level, they look at the new startups coming up, like, Oh, you, you know, but you never know. It could be the person could be in the next Mark Zuckerberg, right? You just never know. So I would say the mistake that they're making is they think that, oh no, I there, there's I've gone to a level where I cannot, I don't have to go to that event because you know no one. I, I've raised fifty million dollars. What what could they tell me that I don't know? But we never know too much. We just never know, right? It's you learn you know, you, we, I learn from everybody, right? When I meet somebody and they're talking to me about what they're doing, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. That's amazing. Like you get knowledge from everyone. It doesn't matter what shape or form. There's always something that you're learning. So I would say, you know, never stop learning. Never stop saying, oh, don't say, oh, I, I, I know it all. Right. You don't know it all. <laughs> you don't. Yes. Very true. Very, very true. Now, with your respect, you know, we don't know it all. You know, that's a, that's a very good point. So with that, what advice or tips would you give to our listeners who are either aspiring founders or entrepreneurs looking to start their own venture? I would say um, don't limit yourself, right? You could do whatever you put your mind to. Um, if you want to raise money and don't say oh no I just I I don't know like you there's nothing you can't do right you know very true very true you can do whatever you want don't limit yourself and I I would also say um before signing anything I know when startups first start and a VC is like oh we'll give you this amount of money for this amount of equity. Um, I'm also a venture capital. Um, I work at venture capital as a deal partner. And um, I was talking to these founders and I was like, okay, so tell, tell me about your company and and everything. And we're interested in, in, in investing. And I was like, okay, so how many, how much percent would you, would you, would you give us? 
And they gave us their percentage. And I said, actually, we want more percentage, right? Because it's, it's, it's risky right now. And we, you know, raising money right now is hard. <laughs> so yeah. we're like, we, we want more equity. And they said something very interesting. They said, oh, we'll give you whatever you want, right? Oh, interesting. And as a founder, that made me very sad. As a venture capital putting my hat on, I was like, yes, this is amazing. But as a founder, I had to pause the interview and I said, you need to know your worth. You can't just say, I will give you whatever. You we just want the money. That is really bad because if you believe in your product, you're not going to sell yourself short. This is, this is the, it's absolutely, you know, it doesn't matter. So I would say to your listeners, it doesn't matter how hungry you are for a particular thing. Know your worth, go to the meeting and say, this is what we want. Be open to it. Of course, you never know too much. Be open to whatever, but don't limit you don't don't make yourself don't sell yourself short because you really want to raise money so you could you know do this so yeah i would yeah just really really know your worth you know, because no that's, that's people, a great point yeah because people when they smell that you don't know their worth your worth they're not going to tell you what your worth your worth is they're going to exploit that right and i had to tell the founders i'm sorry it's i would I just can't do this because as a founder, it just broke my heart. I said, no, I think you should you just go back to your drawing board and just um, just know your worth, like know, know everything. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think even too, when you're looking at the work, so for example, me being a podcast or outsourcing some of the work that I do, mm -hmm. um, trying to take into account the time it takes me and how much I would charge and so how much I expect to be charged. And then, because sometimes you might get asked a outrageous amount. And so you want to really kind of break it down. Is this fair to you, the, the customer as well? Uh, so you got to, you got to kind of play at both sides. Um, understanding that is, is very important. Now for the listeners at home, how can they get, in, if they're interested more about, you know, learning about information systems builder, learning more about you or connecting with you, how can they get a hold of you, social media, websites, where can they find your information? Yeah, so we're a team of 10 employees. Um, and, you know, if you're interested in working for us, you can go on our LinkedIn. And there's always, we're always looking for, you know, marketing, marketing specialists, um, software engineers. So if you're interested in that, if you're interested in being a client, go to our website um, and you could just like sign up and we'll reach out to you. Um, and then if you're just wanting to, you know, just see what is coming up for us, we have a Twitter, we have Facebook, and then we have Instagram, and then we have LinkedIn, and all of them are called um, Information Systems Builder. Um, and yeah, those that's how you, you you know you can reach me. And I actually wanted to add one thing. Um, I I love my idol is Mark Zuckerberg. I love him. Him and Steve Jobs just love them. And I I. I listened to a lot of documentaries and I was listening to a documentary and actually when Mark Zuckerberg made Facebook, um, uh, who was it? It was either Microsoft or Yahoo. They wanted to buy his company for a hundred million dollars. Right. And he said, no, <laughs> you know, he said, you know, I think it was a billion or a hundred. I'm sorry. Right now I'm just, but he said, no, right? He knew his worth and he said, it's, it's going to be worth more than that in five years, yeah. right? Imagine someone turning down that much amount of money. That is crazy. Like if you tell your mom right now, Gabe, I just turned down a, a billion dollars to sell my podcast. She's going to say, son, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and knowing your worth in this business is very important. So I would say to all the founders is, just know your worth, come up with a great product. Um, marketing should be your top three. And it's not because I'm in marketing, but it's, it's really true. <laughs> <laughs> and marketing should be your, you know, your top three and definitely knowing that, okay, this is where I want to go in life. And this is what my product is worth. I know it's the best right now and you're not going to settle for nothing. 
that is, I, 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 if, if I was a founder, if I was an early founder or a late founder, and I don't know this, I would love to know this. So yeah, that's a great, very great point. And, you know, I think you mentioned it too. Funding is very tight. Um, they're unless you're like in Austin or Miami or Chicago now, uh, the tech, you know, down, down, uh, even the tech industry down, um, you know, the Valley is kind of getting dried up as well. So it's like, you have to find other means. Uh, I would encourage the entrepreneurs out there to, and founders to look at, if you can apply for grants, you know, grant that is free money. Um, also look at business accelerator programs, right. Connect like with yours. like my, our Latino, exactly. Like the Latino founders accelerator program, please, by all means, if you're interested, uh, look at latinofounders.com to learn more about that, but like try to find other means of growing your business and educating yourself because there are individuals out there that want to see you succeed. And as Crystal mentioned, you have to know your self-worth because there are individuals that are, be, they are willing to take advantage of that. And I'm, I'm sorry, but that, that is in fact, what a venture capital's goal is. I mean, their, their goal is to make money, their return right. back, exactly. higher the return, the better. Right. Um, and so, and so really just understanding your self-worth, understanding your body of work, and you can in fact scale a business to become a multi-million global company without taking venture capital a great example of that is baseball talk about that can we like just yeah. for, can we i always tell people right whenever i see on linkedin right and someone is like oh i've raised six, 60 million or 100 million right to me i'm like oh my god you gave up so much equity um yeah. Sometimes they give up so, so much equity that the VCs even take over their company. And I think people as founders, they, I don't know about Boston or uh, Oregon or whatever, but I know in San Francisco, when you're a founder, they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm a founder. Oh, nice. What does your company do? How much did you raise? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. That's the next question. And I think a lot of founders, when they come in here, when they, when, when they come into business, they think, oh my God, I need to raise a hundred million because if I don't, then my company is not worth anything. And it's like, no, <laughs> like, like there is, there is a thing where you raise, I, I don't, there's no reason why a company should be raising $200 million, right? Unless you're like a scientist or you really need like those labs and stuff like that. But if you're a regular business, right? I if agree. You have your I agree. Product, just $2 million, right? I don't want to say two, just $2 million and being sensitive, but in the um, VC world, $2 million is nothing. So when you, you just need $2 million try to be more profitable yeah. than actually right you would be surprised people are worth you know yeah 500 million and they barely have customers right so i would say don't be don't be um too um what is the word don't be too down about you not raising or don't feel like you you didn't raise money because your product is not amazing right the way you build generational wealth is by ha being profitable and you have your equity and you're actually enjoying and also when you're taking vc money they're controlling you yes <laughs> you know? yeah. so you don't have the freedom anymore you yeah. know you and, and they're, they're gold i mean they want to find their money back so you know, if that means sell and that means sell. And so just kind of be mindful again. I, and everybody has their own uh, own track and I encourage everyone to choose their the track that they do see fit. But I think Absolutely. Crystal, one of the things you mentioned very, uh, or Cindy, one thing you mentioned really that really stuck home is making sure you know your worth, making sure you understand the value of your business, making sure you've done a really good assessment of value, a uh, value assessment of your business and understand, because again, um, we're always looking for, we're always looking for a good deal, right? At ABC, I'll always be closing. They have always been telling yeah. us in the sales world. But I think you know, one one of my old mentors told me, um, never sell the farm. You know, you, you don't want to sell the farm. So so just be mindful. So Cindy, is there anything else you'd like to tell the folks, uh, the listeners at home before we uh, depart? Yes, I would just, you know, thank you, Gabe, for having me, first of all. And I would also say, tell founders, you know, Use the opportunity with Gay with your accelerator. Um, Please, you yes. Know, you know, I think that is 
like I think as a founder, if you're just starting and you don't know the game, go to him. And I'm not saying this because I'm here. I really think it's a great idea. And I think coming to you, all of the stuff that a founder, when you're just starting or you're just at the pre-seed or seed um, level, all of the mistakes that you would do by yourself, you guys would already tell them, right? You need to do this. You need to talk to this person. So I think programs like that is just amazing. And I got to read a little bit about your accelerator program and I, and I shared to a few people I know, and I think it's an, it's, it's an amazing opportunity, right? So I think I, I, I will tell your listeners, take advantage of, you know, um, Gabe giving you guys this opportunity because it will definitely help you. Yeah. And so for those that don't know, again, you want to find out more information. It's called the latinofounders.com. It is a business accelerator program. It's a 10 week program. We're going to take you through, you know, product development, business development, um, product market fit, which is another big thing. Uh, I think it's imperative that our entrepreneurs actually have the right product market before they go to, to before they go to market and then go into market. How do you actually go to market? How do you launch a product? Um, we are, we're business agnostic. So we are looking at, you know, people from across the industries uh, that identify as Latinos and we're here in the Oregon area currently, but we do are bringing in folks nationally, because again, as I mentioned, there are folks that there's things that we don't know, we don't know. And so bringing in professionals that understand and have that experience in those areas. Uh, one of the things about scaling and, and Cindy, you probably know this very well too, is understanding your operations, making sure you're operational ready. What happens if if one of your product lines blows up and you go 500X in 24 hours? Are you ready for that, right? Um, and having having understanding that or being ready for those life-changing events. Uh, what happens if somebody expires and, and you need to sell the company? Is your exit strategy ready, right? right. And so having, having that, and that's what really what the Business Accelerator Program has helped, uh, aim to help um, uh, provide some understanding around those aspects. So thank you so much for pointing it out. Cindy, thank you so much again for being on the show. I really do appreciate it. I, I think it, really what you're doing, it's it's a very, uh, we, I said it right before we got on the show, uh, the riches are in the niches, you know, and, and focusing on the tech industry, I think is a very smart idea because there there are a lot of folks that need them that are very just kind of startup grassroots uh, and, and, you know, catering catering a, a, you know, product line to their needs also is very nice. And, and as you mentioned, identifying the differentiators, um, what, what differentiate you from the other, uh, from your competitors and, and really pinpointing that, you know, you highlighted it very well, uh, looking at Google reviews and seeing exactly what, what are some of the consumer pain points. Uh, and, and lastly, you know, making sure you're finding, you're solving a problem for the consumer, right? So for the tech industry folks, um, making sure that there's a, there's a problem to the solution, right? It's not just a solution that you're trying to create a problem to, uh, so make sure that you you understand what your customers want. Uh, get get out there and get that product market fit quick, right? Understanding if, if you're going to be able to sell because you're going to be able, you're going to know pretty quickly if if your consumers like it or not. So Cindy, again, thank you so much uh, for coming on the show. Really do appreciate it. For those listening at home, uh, you can follow. You can actually have all Cindy's information will be on the Shades of E newsletter, so you can uh, subscribe to that at theshadesofe.com. You can also follow us at the Shades of E on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and TikTok. With that. Have a great night. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.